Welcome back to Shantae Risky's Revenge. Last time, Overworld. Overworld happened for a while. And this time, gonna be doing the final normal dungeon of the game. That's right, this is the last normal one. Because <laughs> Battle Tower was Battle Tower, so... Uh, yeah, this is one of two normal dungeons is Hypno Baron's Labyrinth. It's also the labyrinth I wasn't looking forward to, and not just because I can't get to that chest up there. So, alright. This one is kind of a maze, but it's the type of maze where you have to use switches to choose what path you're taking, as you might have noticed back there. Uh, we'll be back there in a moment. First, I've gotta just break some blocks. But... When we hit this eye statue, it will turn the eye to a certain direction, which will determine the room we go to. This is the reason I was kind of dreading this dungeon for a while, but honestly, like, learning the route and practicing it, turns out it's actually really not that bad. I tend to not like this kind of dungeon. Mazes are kind of eh in the first place because I have no <laughs> sense of direction. Uh, that skeleton's a real jerk. He just rushes in the moment you get here. <laughs> it's kind of hard to dodge him unless you know he's coming. Uh, skeletons are very fast in general. And also, uh, the skeletons are actually kind of dry bones in this game. As in, after a few moments, they will actually return from the dead or the double dead, to just be the the one layer of dead. Uh, but yeah, no, the, I do love their animation of just turning into a headstone. That's funny. But also, like, not only do they come back from the dead, but you can also use the headstone as a platform. It's not just background decoration. As for the wizards, uh, if I remember correctly, their main attack is just throwing lightning at you, like, Basically, if they're allowed to actually complete their spell, you just get struck by lightning and it's hard to dodge. Speaking of hard to dodge, that shouldn't have been, especially since I dodged the, the Sky Slime, but whatever. Uh, anyway, though, the more dangerous wizard attack is when they just decide to walk right into you instead of casting. Because they take a few hits, so you're gonna want to sit down and kill them. And usually you expect them to just, you know, stop and cast, but sometimes they don't and that's when they get you. Anyway, though, where was I before? Oh, right, so I normally don't like this kind of dungeon. I don't really like mazes a lot in general. I have a terrible sense of direction. Uh, but also, I don't like the choose-your-fate kind of mazes where it's like, all right, now you have to actively use the switches to determine where you go. But I'm gonna be honest, it, the dungeon isn't actually that bad about it. Like, there are a few locations we can't do anything about just yet, and a few of these are a little confusing. For example, uh, this is a slightly different eye switch. It's either open or it's closed. Uh, it doesn't change direction. However, it being or open or closed determines the door on the other side of the room. So we would have gotten a different room here if that eye was open, but because it was closed, we get a very good treasure room. I was not paying attention to my gem total, but I'm sure it went up a lot. Also, I'm never gonna bother with these skeletons, it's not worth it, just pass them by. Pay them no heed, make sure they don't throw you a bone. <laughs> that guy was throwing for a while. He is really holding that one, just... Oh, I'm gonna get Chate! Oh, I'm gonna nail her with this one! Alright, so this is where we need to go, and this is also where you get to see that the headstones do spawn into skeletons. I do like that they throw that in, just, you know, as an example. Because you probably didn't hang around them enough to notice that yourself beforehand. Or maybe you did, I don't know. I don't know how you play personally. <laughs> I, I can't tell. You think I break into your house and watch you play? No, I've got better things to do. Alright, anybody- oh, there you are. This guy was hiding. Alright, so kill all these slimes and you get another key. Now, there was a door way back when, which had a little skull plate over it, and the game did mention that that is a different type of door, so we need a different type of key for that one. You can probably guess from the plaque above it that we're gonna need to find a skull. 
So let's hit this eye to make sure it's closed, because we can't do anything about the open eye direction just yet. But we can go to a platforming section. Oh, no, I was incorrect. This is a smashy smashy section where we have to time ourselves with a statue, fuck up a jump a bunch of times, and I'm probably not gonna make that one. Just wait for you. I don't understand how the timing there was so difficult, but it was. Not even timing, just the angle. For some reason, Elephant just didn't want to jump. Anyway, this is the section I was thinking of. I just forgot the uh, statue part came first. This is kind of similar to that uh, bonus room from the previous episode. The one that was very finicky and I didn't like. Uh, the last one we did. Though it's not as bad as that because it doesn't involve small blocks which are even more annoying to maneuver around. Like, I don't like getting to the sides of blocks as the monkey. It's annoying. The spikes aren't easy to maneuver around, though. Anyway, we've got this block right here. Hey, did you play Super Mario Bros. 3? Well, guess what? It's that platform. You step on the eye, it goes up if the eye is facing up. I don't think they really utilize- oh wait, no, they do. I was about to say I don't think they utilize this one much, but they do. And now here's a third type of eye switch puzzle. Uh, I do want to go here. Uh, basically, each eye determines, uh, what room you go to, so this is the default both eyes to the right room. This is a fairly, uh, straightforward platforming section that actually does make use of the, uh, eye platforms. I'm gonna level with you. I don't know why I thought they didn't make use of these. <laughs> I blocked it from my memory because it was so terrible. No, it- that's actually not too bad, you know? Some of the platforming sections in this game aren't my favorite, but actually, these are pretty good. A lot better than its counterparts from other games, oftentimes. This one's pretty straightforward. And also, this one's very fast. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's just a real fast platform to get you back here. That's fun. Alright, so... The simple puzzle is that when the eyes are facing the same direction, you get a different room. So this one is simple, we just have to drop to the bottom to get the key. Bad news, however, now we gotta get back up, and of course, that's a surface that you cannot climb, so... We do want monkey form, just, you know, for a better jump, and also... Because you can do stuff like this. If you can actually wrap your way around it, that's kind of a nice shortcut. Not like hugely necessary, but you know. It, it's kind of nice to just be able to skip a bit. Wasn't able to there, but again, doesn't kill a run. Just would be nice to skip like a small amount. <laughs> Not even that much, because you need this platform to go forward. Same here. Uh, anyway though, yeah, no, uh, this one's not too bad either. Uh, if you're playing the game normally, the only punishment for failing is just a waste of time, which can sometimes feel worse than just getting damaged. Uh, that being said though, failing that platforming section for me is as lethal as falling into a pit, so... Eh... <laughs> Most of the time, falling into a pit is just my hard, uh, run cut. If, if I fuck up a pit, then I usually just restart. Obvious exception was the last video. But you know what? It's for item collection. Do I really need to be that impressive for item collection? I mean, I haven't been that impressive for uh, this whole dungeon, so... Hmm. I don't think it's too bad. Anyway, it's another one of these. Pretty straightforward. I would say this one's a little more difficult than the other one, just because there's an enemy and some spikes but mm, your mileage may vary. We didn't have to destroy the, the blocks like we did in the other one, so... Uh, who can say, really? Alright, another fast block, though. This one is just rude, and it doesn't take you all the way back. How dare you, fast block? I thought we were friends. 
Alright, so what are we doing? We're just doing this, we're just doing this. Okay, so we got three keys, that's good, but... I'm thinking we need a fork, so... Here's the last normal direction, and... Pass me, what are you doing? There was a gem there, no! Alright, so we'll go up here. This doesn't look too bad. Anything, uh oh, we gotta switch platforms! The room is timed well enough, so that that should be simple. If you don't mess up, you'll make it. Honestly, this is the easiest of this of the uh, rooms, and it's kind of a relief, though. Oh, those gems! I should not have broken that base so quickly. I was a fool, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Alright, so that's four keys. Now we actually have to figure out where to use these four keys, though. Well, let's see what combinations we've got. We've got up and down, which leads you to this upside down room with a treasure, which you can probably guess is a magic jam. But we saw, we've also got a whole lot of gems, and I do really like gems. Not enough to ruin that run for it, but you know, I, I miss them when they disappeared. Anyway, if you do- oh, uh, this was up then down. If you do down then up, that's an ambush room. Uh, yeah, down and up is an ambush room where a bunch of spiders come down, uh, to just shoot bullets at you. Alright, so cross-eyed leads you to the room we're supposed to go to use these keys. And man, the video encoder was fucking up a lot in this one, I'm noticing. <laughs> oh, Vandicam. Anyway. Let's just keep on breaking stuff. Wow, it was really fucking up for this one, jeez. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, that being said, though, this was the longest segment, so I didn't want to screw this up. Okay, so, this room. If you're playing this on your own, don't take a picture of what I have here, because this is actually randomized between playthroughs. Uh, the guide I was using uh, had a completely different set of statues, so uh, you can't hit those statues. They are stone, uh, they do not move, but we do need that combination for a different room. You can probably guess how we get there. But yeah, no, if you're playing on your own, you do need your own combination. Meanwhile, okay, so yeah, <laughs> just... I do love this puzzle, if only for the fact that it works very well. The eyes with the door to just make a very goofy face. The one that we need to use to progress is just... awestruck. <laughs> just absolutely flabbergasted that we visited a different room that we needed four keys for. Oh god! Shantae figured out my devious puzzle! I am done! Alright, so, of course, this is peaceful music, which means... It's a magic fountain. So, Elephant wasn't in a dungeon. Cause again, Battle Tower is just real weird. But this one is in a dungeon, and it allows us to get... The third and final form, the Mermaid Form! So, the first game had the Harpy form, and that was kind of the thing that unlocked just about everything. So, like, if there was anything in the overworld you missed or anything in dungeons, it usually had to do with flying. In this game, we're going the opposite direction. Instead of going up, we're going down. So, on the third dance, we get Mermaid, which doesn't do great on land. It's very slow. It does jump okay, though. It can jump high. She's still a hell of a gal, though. But yeah, underwater, no, we can actually go beneath the waves and just swim around freely. We have no attack at the moment, though, so... If we're to encounter any enemies, you just need to avoid them. I will also say this form is pretty cute. Can't do anything about that. I like the design of it. I think of the three, it's probably my favorite design-wise. In terms of use, though, it's kind of limited. We've seen a bunch of bodies of water in this game, but ah, swimming doesn't quite feel as cool as flying, especially because we don't start with an attack, so... 
we are basically just sitting ducks, or swimming ducks, I guess, if we decide to take a bath. But we will need this to unlock a few more things, including things in this dungeon. However, we still can't get all of the magic jams in here. Uh, you might have noticed, of course, that block back there I did point it out. And yes, there is a treasure chest with a magic jam back there. You jerks. So we still have to come back here, even though we now have all three forms. It's rude. Also, uh, if you happen to save then load, uh, just for, uh, posterity I should mention, yeah, the statue will return to its default state, so it's now I open, which is where we need to go. I did lose a run because I did go back to hit the eye, forgetting that I had to hit it to close it, and then I went back to the area I was already in, so, um... Whoops. <laughs> I, I wasted time there by just assuming that it was in the same state that it was in when I entered, and it wasn't. Alright, so another section where we have to swim. get some gems. No obstacles so far, but if I'm remember- nope, this is not what I'm thinking of. Got more statues, though, which we're going to need to smash. Don't need to smash all of them, though, and in fact, I will not, even though it's kind of a risk. Nah, not a huge risk. That's a pretty easy section. Alright, and we got the bottom half of a skull. How macabre. Alright, well... Let's remove you from play. Donk. Oop. <laughs> and I smashed him. Will I let that statue live? Yes. Yes, I will. Alright, so... That's... This whole section. This was a very big section this, like, two-door section, because it then led to a different switch puzzle, which led to a new form, which allowed us to do other stuff up here, but once we return from here, we can finally return to the start of the dungeon. At last, after 10,000 years, or like 10 minutes, it wasn't that long. Uh, I will say, again, I'm not usually a fan of this type of dungeon. I don't usually like the choose-your-own-room kind of dungeon, but like... Ah, I gotta say, I like the creativity of this one. Each Switch puzzle is different, and, you know, maybe I'm a bit biased because I had a guide, so like, for me, there was no trial and error. I just watched somebody else do it first, and got to say, Oh, cool, so that's how you do it. And see kind of the, the ingenuity and how they change things up. If you're impatient, though, I can't really tell you uh, how good of a dungeon it is, because if you're impatient and you don't like trial and error, and would prefer, you know, just kind of visual differences in your dungeon, uh, it's probably not your cup of tea. But again, since I knew where I was going, this was... Pretty much as easy as the first dungeon in terms of navigation. Which, you know, does have maze-like qualities. It just doesn't have specified switches to choose a room. Alright, so, like I said, back to the beginning, including getting through this platforming section, which I'm pretty sure I botched at least once. Monkey does help. Those good jumps are good. That's kind of self-explanatory if I were it like that. Those high jumps are good, there you go. That's a pretty good description, you know. The high jumps aren't always good, sometimes they do screw you over, but in this instance, they are good. This has been a lesson on wording with your pal, Fefner. <laughs> Fefner, she writes sometimes. 
Alright, so... Obviously, if you were just doing trial and error at the start of this dungeon, uh, you probably would have run across this room. Uh, and you would see the body of water and say, Oh darn, can't do anything here. But these rooms are actually connected, so once you can do something about the water, uh, that actually leads you to the other half of our very, very macabre key. <laughs> it's just a skull. We just have a skull now. We got the jaw, we got the top half, it's all good. Skull's in our possession. <laughs> this bitch took the skull of whoever owns this place. It's just the hip what the Hypno Baron's saying right now. Bitch took my skull. <laughs> it's not even a crystal skull, though, so, like, you can't brag about it. It's just a normal-ass skull. Just take it off one of the skeletons you employed. It's fine. Alright, so we got our one last upper- oh. Sorry, we've got the, uh, enemy spawn room where the enemies didn't spawn, and now we have our opportunity to save. I absolutely would, because that was the dungeon. See, that wasn't so bad, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. And uh, that, that didn't, that was, at the very least, painless, if not actually pretty fun. Honestly, after months of on and off attempting to just get on with the overworld. This was a very nice breath of fresh air. I think I, if I remember correctly, I recorded this when I was like mildly ill. So that was a nice day. Too sick to work, not sick enough to suffer. Hell yeah. Oh, cackle cackle to you too. Okay, look, I know I took a while to get here, but you don't have to recap the game. It's a very standard MacGuffin plotline. Okay, so, I get it. When they call you the Hypno Baron, uh, you're not the mind control kind of Hypno, you're the putting people to sleep kind of Hypno, cause you're boring me. Shantae does not give a shit about you. Does make a good point though, we don't actually know what the lamp does. Or, I'm playing coy about it anyway. What, you couldn't just recolor Mimic's portrait sprite? Alright, so... I guess he's mimicking Mimic, but, uh... I do like how Shantae's just like, I don't give a shit if you look like him, I know you're not him, so I'm gonna beat you up now. Alright, so, fake Mimic, he's got three attacks. You can't interrupt him. But let's see, uh, he will get at least a few of them off. He's got, like, a straightforward projectile. He's got that attack, which is the bane of my existence. Yeah, basically, he will throw the potion on the ground kind of close to where you are, and if you don't move out of the way, then you'll get hit. So don't get too invested in hitting him, or you're in trouble. Trust me, I should know. This is a very easy fight, but I did have to do a few takes of it because sometimes you just get too a bit too preoccupied with hitting him. And if you don't hit him fast enough, <laughs> then yeah, no, you do. Uh, he will just get to uh, throw out an attack without actually being interrupted. And you do have to hit the skull for the final hit, but you know that's a that's a freebie. The Hypno Baron's power was just copying mimic. This is just mimicking Mimic. He put all of his power into that particular wordplay, but not into his own stats. Alright, well, we're back out, but uh, as Shantae says, Risky Boots isn't here. I mean, last adventure, she just met us outside of every dungeon. But uh, yeah, no, she's not here to threaten us this time. I wonder why that is. Ah, well. Maybe we'll figure out why that's the case next time in Shantae Risky's Revenge.